horrible jargon we've totally gotten used to. Don't you hate management speak and corporate jargon? Everybody does, but there's still a chance we might all be talking that way someday. Here are some words that used to be horrible business jargon in the industrial age, but no one blinks an eye at anymore. Contact has a long pedigree as a noun, but as a verb? This was considered a gross corruption of language when it started in the mid-19th century, and people complained about it for decades. In the 1930s, it still made the lists of top 10 most annoying jargon. Now we accept to contact, but only because it's older than to impact or to gift. Interview is another one that made people tear their hair out when it turned from a noun into a verb. Sort of how now a task or some leverage is fine, but tasking or leveraging grates the nerves. The verb to interview, as in can I interview you, was considered the worst kind of hogwash journalism jargon. One early 20th century literary critic called donate utterly abominable, a word that any lover of simple, honest English cannot hear with patience and without offense. Much like today's liaise from liaison or incent from incentive, donate didn't exist until someone awkwardly backformed it off of donation. Like today's mixologist or imagineer, mortician started as one of those pretentious made-up job titles. Who wants to be an undertaker? None of the subscribers to Embalmers Monthly, a trade magazine for the funeral profession. In 1895, they put out a call for suggestions for a more suitable professional title, and mortician was the winner. Decades later, people were still calling it a hideous confusion of a word. Like advertorial, electrocution started as a blend of two words, electric execution. It caused a great deal of anger around the turn of the century, not as a method of capital punishment, it was considered much less barbaric than hanging, but as a word. Critics called it bad and incorrect and that electrocution by electricity was the only proper term for it. People using balance to mean remainder, as in spending the balance of the day, balance of your time, balance of your life, was once considered a hideous and vulgar use of bookkeeping jargon, and it should stay in the office where it belonged. Sort of the way people now object to bandwidth outside the realm of electronic communications. Endorse goes back to Latin dorsum, or back, and endorse always meant to sign on the back, as with a check or other document. Only in the mid-19th century did it start to mean vulgarly, in advertising, to declare your approval of something. Sort of like how buy-in started as a term for buying stocks and now can be used for a general term for agreement. So, who knows, if you now endorse the words that used to sound awful, your grandkids may one day buy in on the ones you hate today.